Shalom family, we continue in the book of remembrance, the first and second books of Achi. The first book of Achi, chapter one, an account of the brother of Jared, who was called Achi, and his departure from the great tower and travels into the country that is furthest east of the land of his nativity, and the account of his vision before, before the altar upon the mount. <clears throat> These are the generations of the valiant holy men who fought on the side of the Lord, on the side of the Erkadorshi, in the war in heaven. Adam was the father of Seth, who was the father of Enos, who was the father of Kenan, who was the father of Mahal, who was the father of Jared, who was the father of Enoch, who was the father of Methuselah, who was the father of Lamech, who was the father of Noah, who was the father of Shem, who was the father of Lud, who was the father of Aki, who was the father of Jared, who was the second son of Lud, Jared was. The name of Achi, by interpretation, means the brother, for he was the brother of all living, and he lived with the Erkadershi, as Enoch did, the seventh from Adam. And much of the time no man knew where he was, for all his doings were with the Erkadershi at the time of the great tower. He walked with the Lord, and he was his companion. But the wiki called him a wild man, and they greatly feared Achi, so powerful his word that the Erkadershi obeyed him, and the elements responded to his righteousness. His word was strong, and his prayers were much sought after by the righteousness of his acquaintance, but the wicked would stand off afar, would stand afar off, and send Jared to seek him. And the Lord had respect for Achi, as he was a large and mighty man, but gentle of spirit and gifted with a mild and kind manner. And it came to pass in the days of Noah that the war among the watchers and the wicked waged strong, it being known as the war in heaven. And Noah was an albino and both shunned and feared by the people but he was both shunned and feared by the people he being the first such person to live on earth as the sins of the people became more wicked and more wicked before the Lord and as the war grew more and more intense, Noah withdrew to dwell on a mountain range in the south in the south of a great valley. And no man knew the extent the extent of the length of it. And it came to pass that Noah dwelt among the Erkadoshi, and Chaphatel loved him, and Semael Shemael obeyed him, and Kayaal loved him, and Abriel visited his abode and hovered about him, but Noah grieved, and his cries were heard day and night for many years before the flood. And it came to pass that Shem was born in the midst of this. Now Shem was a mild man and gentle in his ways, and the grief of his father had a profound effect on him. And Shem beheld the wards of the wicked and the sins of the Dekador Troy for many years, and cried unto the Lord, but found no relief. And it came to pass, in those days, Noah began to be old, not old unto death, but old as in strength of his body. And his son looked out, and his son looked out for his care and attended to him in all his doings. One evening, Shem went looking for his father. And he found him lying in agony upon a hillside overlooking the great valley below. And he hurried to the side of his father to comfort him. And Noah was mourning the awful scene in the valley below, where the smoke burning was rising and the cries of the people could be heard. And Shem said, Father, Father. And Noah said, Here I am, son. And Shem said, Father. 
come up home and rest for a while. Then Noah sat up, and then he lay upon a tree and pointed to the valley below, expounded to his son all the doings of the children of the watchers as they passed through the land in their wicked and violent pursuits. The children of the Decadorshoi are called the Nephilim, and Noah unfolded before the eyes of his son all the intentions of God in creation and all his righteousness and holy purpose for all the hosts of heaven that were handed down from the days of Enoch on the heavenly tablets and opened before his eyes the sufferings and the sorrows of the Messiah. And it came to pass that Shem was angry with the Decadorchi, the Decadorchoi, because of the suffering of his father and the sorrows of the Lord. But he held his peace and determined in his heart to please God and to do all his biddings and all things. Now, from this time forth, Shem began to call upon the name of the Lord in great, in great earnest. And it came to pass that the carnage and the violent deeds increased in so much that Noah no more went down to look into the valley. And the Lord caused the decoratory to pass to pass them by and the sorrow of these days became sore upon noah and his sons and it came to pass that the lord said to build an ark and they dwelt in the high country with and it came to pass that the lord said to build an ark and they dwelt in the high country with kebedaiel in abundance shem ham and others all built the ark under the guidance of Noah, and no man even knew what transpired what transpired with their task of building. Now there had been in the days preceding the flood violent quaking of the earth and animals had changed their normal habits and were not moving about seeking and were moving about seeking comfort and Noah with with a prayer of righteousness. <coughs> to the Lord in behalf of Shemael began to gather them together and began to nourish them and comfort them and the Lord brought him whatsoever the animals he would and it came to pass as the time neared for the flood Noah not knowing when it would be took out the records of Enoch and he found among them a water tablet written by Enoch and he had that that had been preserved and he that had been preserved handed down for the time of the earth would be destroyed by water and it came to pass that in those days Noah dreamed dreams of suffering of the Messiah he having the task of redeeming so great wickedness back into the presence of God and Noah would cry out in the night and Amzar, his wife, would try to comfort him. And it came to pass that Noah kept waiting for the Lord to, to intervene before the great wickedness, but it continued. After a long night of dreaming of the suffering of the Messiah, he awoke and he said, Selah, which is to say, it is enough. He took his son Shem and he built an altar and he called Ebedael. To be a witness, and Imarza, Imzara, blessed the altar, and he, and he placed the water tablet upon his forehead, and for twenty, and for twenty-two days fasted and prayed in righteousness, and his son before the Lord, and he marked each day for twenty-two days, as the works of righteousness. The mark of the limits of the suffering for the Messiah for each day he will proclaim. Selah. Mm. Thus, three weeks and one day passed, and ending on a Sabbath, and Noah called forth the flood by the works of righteousness, and the Erkadoshi rejoiced, and the earth shook, and the clouds gathered, and the wind blew fierce upon the land, and all creation felt felt the impeding judgment and the animals were seen to enter the houses of the people and the fish cast cast themselves upon the seashore seven days passed thus the prayers of noah before the altar and the rains came 
and the floodgates of the great deep were broken up and all the inhabitants of the great valley were swept away and no man knew the extent of the waters for the greatness but but noah did not look into the valley and the water was churning and boiling and filled with filth and debris but not a sound nor a sign heard from the wicked and the ark was lifted up upon the waters and it came to pass in the course of the time allotted by the lord the ark came to rest and the waters abated from the great sea in the valley and the wind was still and noah and and noah and his son departed from the ark and it came to pass in the peace of the moment in the peace of the moment noah smelled a sweet smell of his of his sister Japhetael, and the blossoms of the delight of god for the earth was cleansed of so great wickedness and the messiah rested and a peace was in the wind and the hills rejoiced and the clouds and the clouds clapped for joy now shem was a witness to this great change this was wrought by the righteousness of his father and he praised the lord and the erkadarshi and it came to pass that one day as shem was attending to some of the last of his animals before they departed went their ways <coughs> before they departed and went their ways it was in the early morning in the midst and he heard a voice calling to him shem shem and he said here i am and he looked and in the midst was the form of a man and he said shem my son what is the, the desire of your heart? But Shem knew not what to answer, and he held his peace, and he pondered this thing in his heart. And again, the next, the next morning, from the midst of the herd, the voice the second time, Shem, my son, what is the desire of your heart? This time, Shem told his father of the voice, and Noah said, It is the Lord. You must prepare to answer. And in the and in the course of a few days, the Lord came to him again, and asked, "Shem, Shem, what is the desire of your heart?" And Shem answered, "To see what my grandfather Enoch saw concerning the Erkadershi." Now Shem had asked this in his heart. For he had proposed to change the course of the earth, and he knew that at this time the Decadorchoi were weak and destroyed, and no man would heed them. And he was mystified how the creation of the Lord with their created purpose that his father had unfolded to him could in so short time it could in could in so short a time in ten generations be overwhelmed and presided over by the Decadorchoi. He knew it could happen again in a short time unless something was done in righteousness. And it came to pass that the Lord said, And Shem beheld the visions of Enoch, and he beheld and heard the words of Enoch entering among the tongues of fire. And he wondered as to how to see through the eyes of God the true created purpose of the vision of all creation. And he said, Lord, how can I too enter those tongues of fire to see the true purpose of the earth? And the Lord showed him the Urim and Thummim and instructed, and instructed him in its use. And it came to pass that Shem looked and he saw the day of the coming of the Son of Man into the world. After these things Shem could see, and he beheld all the Erkadorshi and their visions of their created purpose for the Lord as it was in the day God cre the Lord God created them by all his power of his only begotten Son, and he beheld the guidances of God written in the heavy, heavenly tablets. 
And it came to pass, and Shem determined upon the bold strategy he knew from the writings of Enoch, that now, after the flood of the Dekadarchoi were buried in the earth, and Azazel was bound hand and foot and cast into darkness, but the heart and cast into darkness, but the heart of Shem was set a new and a radical course for the for the earth, for he had the heart of a protector of the Messiah, and he would use the urn to see and make his plans. And the adversary was pressing him hard and mocking him and saying to him that and saying to him that he, the adversary, would be the son of God himself. So Shem, so Shem went unto his father and told his father of the danger of the evil of of evil once again, filling the land with violence, and the Decadorchoi in a few generations lead his grandchildren astray. Then Noah gathered himself unto his altar, and he prepared it. And Imzar once again blessed his altar. And Noah prayed before the Lord God, saying, O great Holy One, who rules over all spirits of all living, both on earth and in heaven, you have loved me and preserved my family from the waters of the great flood. You were kind and did not let me perish like the wicked and the Nephilim. You are great, O God, and life to my soul. Let your eyes be lifted up be lifted up and look upon my children, and do not let the decadorchoi rule over them because they will destroy them. But bless all the children of men, and let them grow and increase in righteousness to be happy and fill the earth so as to fulfill your purpose and creations for in creation for them and now O lord god your eyes have beheld the decador choi did in my days and the violence and the sorrow they brought shut them up do your judgment now again upon them that they may no more destroy and corrupt the way of the people O great holy one because they are violent and cruel and they were created to destroy do not let them rule over the visions of creations of you O god but remember the judgments heralded and called forth by my father enoch and let them not have power over the children of righteousness forevermore and the Lord heard the prayer of Noah and said, I must allow a tenth part of them to remain upon the earth. And those who remain are the evil spirits of the earth. But the rest I will cast down to judgment until the end of days. Then the pit shall have been opened. And once again, they shall, they shall be among men. Now Shem continued to seek the Lord in the matter and he stood and he stood before the urn and he walked with God and he was free to dwell with the Erkadarshi and they talked together as one man talks with another and it came to pass that Shem prepared himself to strike a blow in the cause of righteousness for he wanted the earth to have a new righteous nature now Shem was a mighty man and his doings among the men and the Erkadarshi have been kept hidden by the hand of the Lord until now. And his wife was powerful also and stood beside him, the Lord and the Erkadarshoi. And she was called Sekhetetuala, which by interpretation means the righteousness of God is a treasure hidden in my bosom. And she was the rib of this righteous and holy servant of the Lord and nothing was able to impede them for the earth was new and clean before the Lord and the waters of purifying had covered much of the earth and Shem looked and he saw and he prepared and he planned and it came to pass that on that proper day nearly one year after the waters abated Shem had a plan prepared for he walked with God and and Shem had withdrawn himself from the people and he and his rib went upon the Mount P 
Pitax, which is known to the Decadershoi as Hermon, and and where the and there he prepared an altar unto the Lord in the high places of the mount, and his rib blessed the altar. Now Petach overlooked the surfaces of the earth, and was covered, and was covered with the flood, and all the regions round about as far as the flood extended. But it did not flood Anak for the sake of Enoch, and and there Shem blew the trump of summons. And called forth the Erkadershoi one by one, and for a jubilee of days. Shem, who is known to the Erkadershoi as Michael the Prince, caused all their hosts to enter into a solemn covenant um, seven times to forever be the bearers of the word, and as and as long as the earth shall stand, be covenant, be coveted to be the language of repentance and the language of glory within the being and and behalf of the Messiah and they all and they all by one according to their inscription came forward before God and all their fellows to, to covenant to follow and obey and love the man who was worthy to see his every desire and to resist evil and to and to war to sur and to war to suppress the decadershoi for all generations of the earth and it was so and week by week they promised for seven weeks but Simyaza and his band would not now day after day for 49 days, the Erkadoshra gathered upon Mount Patak to make their declarations, and Shem sounded the trump of summons loud and long at sunrise, at sunrise each Sabbath, for seven Sabbaths. And his rib looked on and rejoiced in her heart, and she loved the Lord and the Erkadoshra. And it came to pass that the declaration of the Erkadorshoi became so great that the thunder rolled and the hills and the hills shook and the wind blew to hurl the news that the Erkadorshoi through the power of the presence of the Son of God will forever proclaim that the Son of God was in and through them and gave them life and governed their visions and that mankind would forevermore be to them the object of creation to the fulfillment of the desire of the great one and thus they they seven themselves but Simyaza would not and he said Shem and, and he said Shem kept forcing him for he would not worship the image of God to let the vision of the great holy one preside over his life and he would not acknowledge the vision of the created order of the hosts of heaven but Shem was armed with righteousness and the power of God in great glory and he had a tablet that was holy and for 49 days he prayed mightily before the Lord to call forth a great covenant of righteousness among the watchers of heaven and Samyaza and the Decretroy hid themselves for the remainder of the time and it came to pass that Shem and his rib saw and bore witness with Ebedel that the earth and the Erkadershoi entered into a covenant with him and obtained their new and righteous nature and being a priest of the Most High God and it came to pass uh, and being a priest of the Most High God. And thus it was that a covenant was made that was never to be broken, which was completed on the 65th day of the season, for which is called the Feast of Weeks, for the Jubilee of Seven Weeks, but is called Shabuah because of the covenant. Mm. It was because of this covenant that the Lord 
God bestowed upon Shem the name Melchizedek, which by interpretation means, My king is righteousness. His rib is the rib. Okay, my king is righteousness. His rib is the rib of Melchizedek, for the righteousness of God is that her husband established is the treasure hidden in her room in her in her heart now there could be no man greater than this than this man Shem among all the sons of men save Messiah and in the course of the time of Melchizedek was also called the elder of the Erkadoshoi so listen and understand clearly that all the Erkadoshoi, the hills, the mountains, the rivers, clouds, solemnly co covenanted seven times, and each and every one of their kind and all their several hosts to all carry as to all carry as their created purpose, even as their very identities, some specific aspect of feelings and nature of the Son of God. And further, to express the word that is written into all things according to whatever their specific identity is to men, who are the object of their creation, each and every time they encounter one another according to, to the need for the word to be spoken and the power of glory, nothing varying henceforth and forever. Now, every bush and every insect and every rock will speak in behalf of the Son of God to every person either to reveal a knowledge of their sin or to affirm the will of God to them that has entered their heart and every wind and puff of breeze will bear record of his name and will carry the prayers of the righteous to of the righteous to to do his bidding and now behold this is a great mystery as to how the earth could fall in ten generations in so much a state of wickedness that the great holy one would repent that he made it and and all the children of man to destroy them with the flood but then it but in the last days it shall fall steadily throughout many generations until wickedness abounds and the earth with its wicked with with its wicked finally must needs to be destroyed with fire and it came to pass that Achi beheld creation and his account of it will be given hereafter but suffice it to say that when the Lord God created the earth, it was done in Elda, which by interpretation is God is here, and the host of heaven, and all of mankind, and all of the earth were created without any prospect or allowance being made for evil, failure, sin, pollution, or corruption in the great mind of God in the great mind of God and God of the Father made no defense against us things because of the two decrees of creation and it was in this way that Semyaza met no resistance until Enoch and no defiance until Shem but Shem built a protection and a resistance against the evil of the Ekadoshoi into all the element of creation in the persons of the Messiah and he caused all who and he caused all who among the watchers to covenant to follow the Messiah and to love him and to stand for him and to help him and to protect and pray for him and that the covenant of the love is called Shabua and further the accumulation of movement in the agency of the Ekadoshi was sealed firm with the covenant on Patash, insomuch that now they will never decide to betray him or abandon him 
and the agency of the Decker Dartroy was also set and sealed in their pact on Hermie. The and the Holy Great One requires it at their hand, and they cannot decide to repent nor find forgiveness. And because of the flood and Shabuah, the fallen ones in heaven are subdued and oppressed by the Erkadarshi and also the righteous. Insomuch that many generations will pass before the wicked are ripe again for destruction. This time they will be destroyed by fire. And because of these things, it will take many generations before the Decador Troy will come again to preside upon the earth, among all the families of the earth. And Enoch saw great wickedness and sorrow, both among men and creation of the earth. And he responded to intervene with his agency and obtain a decision to censor and destruction upon the Decadar Choi from the Holy Great One. And he set a course and prophesied the birth and vision of Noah and and as a scribe of righteousness wrote for him heavenly tablets of righteousness element that have called forth the conditions for the flood and its destruction of the wicked and all the Nephilim. And again, Noah and his love for the Messiah define the extent of the limit of his suffering and using the element of Enoch and using the element of Enoch and righteousness with the heavenly tablets to the, with the heavenly tablets he intervened to call forth judgment upon the world and the wicked and establish once and for all that when the conditions of those limits are met the wicked will once again be destroyed thus we see that within the function function of the intervening agency of messiah these men abided by the decrees of creation and participated in the doings of creation but Melchizedek was never greater was was even greater for he not only intervened into the doings of creation but established righteousness to such an extent with Shabua that he also participated in the affairs in the affairs of salvation and in his calling forth Messiah to be in and through all things and he was able to establish that all of the elements of holiness will be a part of the salvation of man. And so powerful were the words of the doings of Melchizedek that he established a part of the eternal nature of the Son of God in element for all generations of the earth. And man is thus commanded to renew his covenant year by year forever with the Erkadershi on the self on the self same day of the Shabbat of of the Shabbat to declare the eternal nature of Messiah and to the ends of the earth. Now behold a great mystery. It was this great man establishing and defining his holy order of priesthood and element that it could be said of him that Messiah would be ordained after the order of Melchizedek and we too can likewise participate in the doings of creation and the affairs of salvation because of the religion of Shabua and by the great man Melchizedek we too being called and ordained by God into the holy order of the priesthood can intervene in these days of wickedness and vengeance in so much the earth may rest and we too hurled the deeds of the Messiah and the destruction of the wicked in tribulation in tribulation times for all this do the the Erkadershi call Michel, call Michelzadak Michael for this did for this did Messiah say by the mouth of the prophets Michael will help me mm, mm, mm. now these things have been hidden from all men, but now have been revealed in the writings of Achi, 
grandson of Melchizedek, and for this reason it is commanded of God that the trump shall that the trump shall sound in all the camps of the righteous who who have a high priest and shall continue sounding each sabbath sunrise for seven sabbaths until the 60th day of the season of spring in which the time the great covenant of Melchizedek shall be renewed and herald to to all the earth the eternal proclamation shall be rehearsed to the Erkadershi the Messiah is the prince of the host and it came to pass that Shem kept this year by year even as they did in heaven since creation now the brother of Jared would, as a lad, go with his grandfather to the feast of Shabuah. And once in his twelfth year, Shem took up, took up to Mount Patash, and he repaired the altar and renewed Shabuah from the rising to the setting of the sun. And the altar was upon a flat place between two peaks, and Achi loved his grandfather. But Lud, who was the father of Achi, had perversity of heart and Achi was taught all things by his grandfather and he viewed the records and he beheld the heavenly tablets the heavenly tablets of Seth and Enoch and his grandfather and he beheld the tablets of Elda and the water tablet and the tablet of the law of the virtue and he beheld the urm and the thurm and was taught by Shem from on high and Achi learned all things doing learned all the things of the Erkadershi that Shem had seen by by Urim and Achi walked with God for Achi knew nothing doubting the Messiah was in and through all element and gave life and identity to all of it except he could not influence the doings of the Derkadorchoi, they being created to express him, and they would not. And it was for this reason that he fell to the earth to see the finger of the Lord, he, he not supposing Messiah to have flesh and blood. And it came to pass, as Achi grew into manhood, he dwelt among the Erkadershi, and in those days, Semyaza spoke to the hearts of many, and one of the sons of Noah named Japheth, whose name means to enlarge hell. Wow, excuse me, this is my first time reading you guys. Uh, whose name means to enlarge hell, found and brought back the evils of the Nephilim and the secret combinations of the decorator choy now many of the people began to hearken unto these things and many said we can be great warriors like unto them of old let us build a great tower to pro to proclaim to any that pass by that we are like unto our great forefathers and we have great spiritual power like unto them of old and thus make us a name and thus Oh, and all will fear our name, and we shall gain power over the earth. And in this day, all the Decadur Troy intended to restore their power as it was before the flood. But we shall see that they were to be disappointed in this evil design. And it came to pass that when Shem began to hear and see these things coming again, he was not moved, but had peace of mind because of Shabuah, and he prophesied that if the people would try to make for themselves a name, the Lord would withdraw his spirit from them, and in this way their speech and doings would be confounded. And it was in these days, as it was in the days of old, the language was pure and undefiled, and much of human speech was like the heavenly tablets and was without words mm. therefore all people were constrained to speak 
with the assistance of the Spirit of God. So if he could withdraw his spirit, they could not understand, but would begin to dispute among themselves, and the workman could not understand his instructions. And it came to pass, as this wickedness grew among the people, Shem repaired unto the south, the Shem repaired unto the south of Pitash, to the fountain of water, where he could view the mount, and, and his father Noah went with him. And there he established a city by this fountain called Mabunkanash, Ma probably said that wrong, sorry guys, which means the fountain of the serpent. And it was called this because it was the last place where the song and dance of Eve was danced by by the rib of Enoch. But Achi, being yet young, remained with his father Lud, and all the doings of Achi were righteous like unto his grandfather. And it came to pass that one day Jared sought after Achi and passed by the and passed by as he did, so he stopped by the well of water, and there he found a maiden drawing water, and he said to her, Are there any wild men in the land? And she replied, There is one. And he said, Do you know how I may discover him? And she replied, I will lead you to him. And taking up the jar of water, they walked about one, about one half hour journey, to where Achi had his his lair. Upon seeing him, Jared held his brother, and they began to speak of the great tower. And the maiden filled the jar filled filled the jar of Achi with water and was about to withdraw. And Jared said to her, Maiden, how are you called? And she said, I am called Tefara. I am the granddaughter of Sekhtatula by her son Tyrus, and she withdrew. Now the father of Tyrus was Japheth by his wife Adetaniah, which means to pass away from affliction. And because of the jealousy of her husband, she did die at birth of Tyrus, and said that the Quilab nursed him from the day he was born and raised him up as her own. And it came to pass that the Lord had commanded Achi to stand as a spokesman for Jared. And, and the more righteous among the people, as he had a great plan in his vision of love for him. For the Lord feared that unless one lived with the Erkadarshe should for the Lord feared that unless one who lived with the Erkadarshe should be their spokesman, these righteous people would not be able to live out their created purpose, and it was for this purpose to cause Jared Jared to came came to find him, to have him inquire of the Lord for their sake. And it came to pass, as wickedness increased and the building of the tower drew near, they remembered the prophecies of Shem, and the people would be scattered and their language confounded. It was because of, it was because of Shabua that the Erkadershi would petition the Lord to withdraw his spirit from, from these that object of their creation. For now the Erkadershi by covenant could now could not allow the Dirkadershi to rule over man, to once again for themselves as a people an evil name of a lying vision, and it was for this cause that Shem retired out of their midst, and being the cause of their failure in their evil design, and Achi went before the Lord, and the Lord spake unto, spake unto him from the midst of Abriel, concerning the request of Jared and the brother of Jared 
saw him not. And it came to pass that it was in the first year of the building of the tower that Achi took to Farah to wife. And they together dwelt among the Erkadarshi, and she was with him in all his doings. And she was strong of spirit, for she feared not the wicked, but walked before the Lord with her husband continually, like unto her grandmother, such a Tawila. And <coughs> she was a woman of faith, and she was righteous, for she loved the Lord and, and the Erkadarshi, and she and she girded herself about with skins like unto her husband. Now Tephora bore Achi a son, Pegag, meaning to be separated by water, in the early years of the building of the tower, and she raised her children to walk And she raised her children to to walk circumspectly before the Lord. And it came to pass that Shem and Sedatequilab had left some of the records of the old in the care of Achi and Tafara. And when they departed out of the land, Tafara would recite the tablet of the law of virtue to her children, and they were holy children unto the Lord. Even these very records were preserved by the hand of Pagag, son of Achi, he being guided by the watchful hand of his mother. And it came to pass that Achi and Tephora would not come near unto the camps of the builders, and the word spread that Achi was displeased, and the people said, Shem. The priest of the Most High God has departed out of the land, and Achi, who was like unto him, is also displeased with the building of the work of our hands. And there went out an uproar in the camp, for some said, It is a bad sign, and surely the great work will come to nothing, and the prophecies of Shem will all be fulfilled. And it came to pass that the tower was in building, forty years, and it was in the third year that the prophecy of Shem began to appear, and the workmen began to not understand their instructions to one another. But Semyaza fought back, and 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 the overseer said said that those who could not understand were inferior and must be the slaves of the others. In this way the building commenced again and their wickedness grew. At this time, Jared and, his, Jared and his father, Lud, were camped among the laborers at the tower. And thus far, Lud had kept the overseers from taking Jared, and Jared remembered the prophecies of Shem. And he approached Achi, and he approached Achi to seek the Lord in behalf that they would not be confounded or enslaved. And it came to pass that the Lord answered the prayers of Achi, and Jared was not enslaved when the friends of jared saw he was not confounded they too were were fearful of slavery and requested of jared the prayers of achi in their behalf and it came to pass that the work of the tower went went onward and division increased and jared went out again unto achi to have him inquire as, as the purpose of the lord if he would leave them out of the land as he did Shem and Second Tequilab. And it came to pass at this time the tower had been in building seventy years. And Tephora had born for Achi a son named Nusara, which by interpretation means rustling north wind. And she now being once again large with child, accompanied him to bless the altar, and he went to inquire of the Lord concerning the request of Jared. And it came to pass that Tufora in those days did walk to a different way to the altar from Machi, for she walked with the Erkadershi and preparation to bless the altar. 
and after he arrived, she would come and sing the song of Eve and dance before the altar and pray and bless it. But this time, she delayed her coming, and Achi wished he had walked with her to help her. And it came to pass, after a time, she came bearing her infant in her arms and danced her way before the altar, and the child was content to hear the song of the dance and did not cry and was covered from the light of the sun and because he was quieted with the song of the dance he was named Nakash which by interpretation means the serpent in reference to the song and Achi prayed before the Lord and the Lord appeared unto him and called him unto repentance and required him and required that he no more live among the Erkadershi, but that he should gather his family and have Jared and all their families, all their families and friends to gather their substance to be led by the hand of the Lord to a land that is choice above all other lands in the earth. Mm. But it came to pass that they were obedient unto the Lord, and Jared and his friends and their families all gathered their substance together and prepared to leave the land of Shinar. The friends of Achi and Tephora dwelt mostly away from the camps of the builders, as they were more at home among the righteous, but Jared and his friends dwelt among the camps of the builders. And it came to pass that Achi rehearsed unto his friends all the things the Lord had said and he also believed the prophecies of Shem and his friends and of Achi were desirous to go with Achi because he believed and he loved the Lord but the family and friends of Jared were desirous to depart out of the land to escape bondage mm. and thus there was a difference in those days who heeded the voice of Achi and it came to pass this people numbered about forty and three souls and and they departed out of the land northward and crossed a small mountain range but they found streams of water which led down to a great sea. Now, the sea was changed because of the flood, and there was still seen trees standing in the water by the shore. Therefore, they named it Sea of Ba, which by interpretation means to gush up or swell over. And it was here in the place that they made barges and trees were in abundance. And the friends with Jared murmured to build, but the Lord would not suffer them to remain in the place. So they departed across the Sea of Ba. When they reached the other shore, they again departed and it was eastward into a part of the earth where man had not been. And it came to pass, Achi and Tephora and their friends taught them all how to dwell among the Erkadershi. And they taught them to snare food and keep bees and to eat righteousness upon the land by listening to the voices of the Erkadershi. And it came to pass, that some of the people murmured 
at the loss of the comforts of the encampments in Shinar, and some women complained against their husbands, but Sephora and her friend, who was called Shema, were kind and patient, and walked in the holiness before them, and were examples unto them. For Sephora was strong, and a woman of grace, and Shema was obedient unto the Lord. And it came to pass, as they traveled, Achi taught them all from the writing of Shem. And by those sacred things, the Lord had preserved and given to them by the hand of Shem. And Tephora taught all the children of the law of virtue uh, from the holy tablets, from the holy heavenly tablets, excuse me. And thus they journeyed for 40 years eastward, and they passed dry desert and grassy plains and came to lands with strange trees and animals and as they went they would establish themselves for a time in a way that the Lord could provide for them and they would prepare and put by the oh they would prepare and put prepare put by for the sabbatical year then during the sabbatical years they would travel all that year leading on gently for the sake of the children and it came to pass that it was in this manner that they traveled many years until they came to a very large and wonderful valley that was filled with large upstanding rocks rocks like huge tables scattered about scattered about the land and in between these rocks was a smooth flat lush valley with fine rivers of water and the place to them was like a paradise for it had wild peaches in abundance and the river was filled with fish and the earth was rich and grew food in abundance it was well they were in this great valley called Sevorek Seorek Soramek that some of the men had occasion to follow the river and discovered that it ran down to the great sea and Achi remembered the Lord had said that they would come to a great sea and that beyond it was the land <sighs> excuse me and that beyond it was the land that will fulfill the visions that the Lord had for his people but he had dared not to speak of it as already there there was a dispute as already there was a dispute among the people for many were weary of traveling and the place they had come come to was pleasant and good and they all feared to cross this great deep as none of them were by training shipbuilders and none were knowledgeable as to passing in the midst of the sea mm. And it was for this reason Achi held his peace. And thus the people stood in this dispute for this space of four years. Wow. Four years. Now it came to pass that Achi, year by year, and whatsoever place they would find themselves, would on the proper day build an altar and remember the covenants of Shabua. And it came to pass that this time when he went to the altar, the Lord appeared to him in a cloud and chastened him for not seeking the will of the Lord in prayer for direction in crossing the great deep. And Achieve repented for being afraid of the people 
and the Lord forgave him. By this time, the people numbered nearly 300 souls. Tephora having bore four sons and three daughters for Achi. And the Lord instructed Achi in the manner in which they must build ships. Hmm. And the ships numbered eight and were built on the banks of the river in the midst of the encampment of the people. And when they beheld the building of the ships, many would not would not but Jared and his family but Jared and his family and Achi and the family of Shema and one friend of Jared proceeded in the building mm. now among those born in the course of the journeys was a young man named Ziklag who said that the who said that the Lord would make a great nation of those who remained and in this way many were content not to cross the great sea with Jared and Achi. And it came to pass that those who desired to stay were the same ones who left Shinar out of fear but the ones who were willing to trust their lives into the hand of the Lord were those who left Shinar out of obedience and love of the Lord. And thus we see that no matter how long a people go or how much their circumstances change, unless they repent and turn unto the Lord, in the end their sins remain and they are found to be disobedient. And it came to pass that there were only forty and three souls who would obey the voice of the Lord. And it was the summer of the fifth year in the week of years that they commenced the building of the ships. They were small and only to hold five or six persons each and their ends were upturned and their timbers were fitted tightly and pitched over the top and the bottom hmm. and when they completed the people who would remain <coughs> excuse me the people who remained chided those who would go that they would suffer from a lack of air and dwell in darkness. So once again, Achi went before the Lord to inquire concerning this matter. And it came to pass that Achi cried unto the Lord and he said, O Lord, most holy, we have finished building the ships according as you have desired. But the people chide us and say, when we are tossed about by sea and m must needs to take refuge inside the ships, that we will want for air and dwell in darkness. O oh Lord, what shall we do? And the Lord showed him the manner in which they could alter the ships insomuch that when they were covered by the waves of the sea, they would receive air. And it came to pass that Achi went before the Lord again, and Sephora sat at a little distance, having come upon the mount to comfort Achi and support him in prayer. And he cried again unto the Lord, and he said, O Lord, I have done even as you have instructed, but I do not know in what manner we may have light to lighten your way when we have gone forth in the ships and we are tossed about in the midst of the sea. And the Lord drew near and he spake to Achi, even as one man speaks to another. And he said, What is it that you would that I should do for you? 
that you might have light. Come, let us reason together. And Achi knew that a lamp could not lighten their way, for he could not kindle a fire in the midst of a sea. And, and the Lord said, You cannot have a window, as a water shall gush forth in the midst of it. Therefore, what is it that you desire that I should prepare for you, that you may have light? when you shall sail forth across the deep sea. And Achi did not know what to answer the Lord. And they went down from the altar of the Lord for a time. And it came to pass that Achi pondered these things in his heart. And he rebelled and, and he recalled the words of his grandfather. And he knew that the Lord could do all things that are expedient for the blessing of men and he knew that the Erkadershi would heed his requests and the support and the desires of the Lord so he went forth unto the side of the mountain and called Shalem which means mountain of tranquility and called up and called up and called up Malaka El for help, for Achi was burdened for the cares of the people, and the mountain and the mountain comforted him, comforted him, and Achi decided upon a plan, for he did a molten out of a rock, sixteen small stones that were clear like unto glass and he placed them in a bag and took them up to the altar and he laid them upon the altar one by one around a small fire now this was in the evening about the 11th hour and Achi had been four days upon Mount Shalem obtaining the stones and Sephora had approached at a little distance with the provisions of a meal she knowing he had not eating, eaten and when she appeared toward the altar and was yet behind a large stone and she stopped in the shadow of the rock and she knelt upon the earth with her hands upon the rock and she put her face in her hands to cover her face because she knew she was in the presence of the Prince of Hosts, the man who was worthy. And she prayed before the Lord Achi and, and she repented of her sins mightily and praised her maker. And now and now it had once come to pass that, that when Achi had placed the stones upon the altar, he began according to his custom, which he had, which he had been taught by his grandfather, to repent mightily of his sins in order to approach the Lord, and he did so, and he began to know he was in the presence of the Lord, and he said, "O oh God," and he said, "O oh Lord, have mercy on me, for I am lowly." For I am a lowly man rejected by his father. And a thing of not unto all my kinsmen, save one brother. Wherefore, O Lord, be patient with me, and love me as, as I ever only desire to please you in all things. And will you, O Lord, consider these things which I have placed before you? Can you not touch these stones with the presence of your being, that they may shine forth before I before our eyes? Can you not bring the light, which is in all things, that is in the midst of the Erkadershi, and fasten it upon these stones by the power of your spirit? 
And it came to pass that when she had said these things, the Lord reached forth with his arm from out of the midst of the fire, and his hand touched the stones by one finger, and Achi beheld the hand of the touching stones with one finger, and, and it was the hand of a man like unto his own, and he fell down upon the earth with his arms wrapped about himself. And the Lord was amazed, and he said, Arise, why have you fallen? And Achi said to him, As I look upon your hand, I am overcome with exceeding great joy, for I have never supposed that you have flesh and blood, and I saw your finger touch the stones. And now I know, O oh Lord, that you are a man, and you can love me. And, and that we can walk together as friends in the earth. And my joy is full to overflowing to think that we can know one another as kindreds of the earth and this thing I never before I never before had supposed excuse me you guys I was just tearing up right there I'm sorry for my grandfather has taught me in Shabua that your presence is in all things had I supposed it to be only the presence of a spirit. But now I know you are man, and we can love one another, and my soul will never be alone. And the Lord said, Do you desire to see more than my hand? And Achi said, O oh Lord, I am unworthy before you. Nevertheless, do according to your will. And when Achi had said these words, the Lord reached out with his hand and raised him up and stood him up on his feet. And they gazed upon one another. And the Lord said, Behold, I am the one prepared from before the foundation of the world to redeem my people and to walk among them. Excuse me. I am Messiah. I am the God of Shabua, and I am the Father and the Son, and in me all things have life. For the power of my love and the element of my presence, I have created all things, and never have I stood before a man in the body of my spirit as I now am before you and this because we truly love one another do you desire to see more than this and Achi said oh lord you alone know that which my soul can bear please strengthen me and it be according to your will and when the lord had said <laughs> And when the Lord had said these words, he, shown, he, sh he showed unto Achi all the inhabitants of the earth, starting from before the time of Adam. And the Lord withheld nothing from his sight. Excuse me. And he... And he withheld nothing from his sight unto the unfolding to him of all his revelations. And Achi saw and bared record. Now it came to pass that all the while Tephora prayed mightily unto the Lord in the shadow of the rock. And about the eighteenth hour the brilliant light diminished and a gentle light proceeded from the altar. 
and she cast her gaze around the rock and there was Achi lying on the earth before the altar and when and when she approached she found him asleep and the stones on the altar shined forth in the light and she cut and she covered him and sat by him until he awoke at dawn and she can and she comforted him and gave him to eat and it came to pass that he rested all the day and in the evening just at sundown they proceeded down to the encampment and she and Achi each carrying a stone to light their way and when the people beheld the light of the stones a few repented and prepared to obey the Lord to cross the great sea.